Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. You know, we're your trusted source for staying in the know about HIV testing uh, right here in the United States. Absolutely. And today we're diving deep into some promising news in the fight against HIV, you know, news that has the potential to impact us all. Yeah, this is really exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, we're talking about Lena Capavir, a potential HIV therapy that is showing some really encouraging results, especially when it comes to the issue of drug resistance. That's right. So before we get into all the specifics, let's kind of set the scene here. Drug resistance is a growing concern in HIV treatment. Why is that such a big deal? Well, you know, traditional HIV treatments work by suppressing the virus's ability to replicate. They target different stages of the virus's life cycle. It's kind of like a, you know, multi-pronged attack. But the virus can mutate over time and become resistant to these drugs, which can make them less effective. Right, it's like a constant back and forth. You know, scientists are trying to stay one step ahead of the virus. Yeah, precisely. It's this evolutionary arms race. And that's why new therapies with different mechanisms of action, like Lena Kapavir, are so critical. You know, they offer a new weapon in our arsenal. Okay, so Lena Kapavir, what makes it different? How does it actually work? So Lena Kapavir targets the virus's capsid, which is like a protective shell around its genetic material. Think of it as the virus's armor. And Lena Kapavir disrupts this armor, which prevents the virus from replicating and spreading. Okay, so it's not attacking the virus in the same way as traditional therapies. Exactly. It's a totally different approach, which is why it holds so much promise, especially for people who have developed resistance to other HIV drugs. Now, this new research on Lena Kapavir is coming out of Uganda. Can you talk a little bit about the study and what made it stand out to us? Absolutely. The study was published in the Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy, and it looked at the prevalence of natural resistance to Lena Kapavir in Uganda, where there are specific HIV subtypes prevalent, and these haven't been studied as extensively as, you know, the subtypes that are commonly found in the U.S. Interesting. So even though the research is happening in Uganda, it could have implications for HIV treatment here in the state. Because HIV is a global pandemic, and what we learn about the virus in one part of the world can inform treatment strategies everywhere. So tell me, what did the study find? Was there a lot of natural resistance to Lena Kapavir in these Ugandan patients? So they analyzed HIV samples from over 500 Ugandan patients, and these patients had never been on antiretroviral therapy before. And get this, only 1.6% of those patients had HIV strains with known resistance mutations to Lena Kapavir. Wow, 1.6%. That's, that's incredibly low. That's got to be encouraging for the future of this therapy, right? It really is. This low resistance rate suggests that Lena Kapavir could be a highly effective treatment option, especially for people with those specific HIV subtypes. But and this is important, we can't get complacent. What do you mean by that? Well, HIV is a master of adaptation as we roll out Lena Kapavir. It's going to be crucial to monitor for the potential development of new resistance mutations. Ongoing surveillance is going to be key. We need to stay vigilant. Yeah, right. Yeah, that makes sense. We have to be constantly on the lookout for these new variants, just like we do with other viruses. Mm -hmm. So going back to the Ugandan study, how do those findings kind of translate to HIV treatment here in the U.S.? Yeah. I mean, they were looking at different HIV subtypes, right? Yeah, that's a really good question. And you're right, the specific subtypes they studied in Uganda aren't as common here in the U.S. But here's the thing about HIV, it's always evolving. And the more we understand about how the virus behaves in different populations and how it develops resistance, the better equipped we are to fight it no matter where it shows up. So even though it's a different subtype, what we're learning in Uganda could still help us here with you know, preventing or managing resistance to Lena Kapavir in the U.S. Exactly. It's like studying your opponent's tactics in one battle to prepare for future ones. The insights that we get from this research can help us anticipate potential challenges and come up with better treatment strategies that work for everyone. That makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about access for a minute. Assuming Lena Kapavir does live up to its potential, how do we make sure that the people who need it, both here in the U.S. and globally, can actually get it? I mean, we've seen with other HIV medications that access can be a real barrier. Oh, absolutely. You're right. New therapies are only helpful if people can actually get them. And there are a lot of factors at play here, you know, cost, healthcare, infrastructure, even social stigma. We need to tackle these obstacles head on to make sure everyone who needs this medication can benefit from it no matter where they are or their economic situation. So it's not just about developing the drug, it's about making sure that everyone has equitable access to it. Exactly. And that's going to require a team effort. You know, we need policymakers, healthcare providers, advocacy groups, and the pharmaceutical industry all working together to make sure these groundbreaking treatments get to the people who need them most. 
It sounds like a pretty complex issue, but a very important one to address. It is, and it really highlights how, you know, scientific progress and social justice have to go hand in hand. Okay, so as we start to wrap up our deep dive into lenacapavir, what are the key takeaways for our listeners, especially those here in the U.S. who are tuning in to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast? Well, I think first and foremost, lenacapavir is a potential game changer in HIV treatment. It offers a new way to fight the virus by targeting its protective capsid, and early research suggests that it could be highly effective even against those drug-resistant strains. And even though this recent study was focused on HIV subtypes that are more common in Uganda, the insights from that research can still inform treatment strategies and drug resistance monitoring here in the U.S. Exactly what we learn about HIV anywhere in the world can benefit everyone. And finally, I think this new therapy really underscores the critical importance of equitable access to treatment we have to make sure that these life-saving medications reach everyone who needs them regardless of where they live or their circumstances. Yeah, this has been a really fascinating deep dive. I mean, lenacapavir really does seem like a huge step forward in the fight against HIV, mm. you know, especially for those folks who are dealing with drug resistance. It's a reminder that what we learn about this virus anywhere can help everyone. Absolutely. And it also highlights just how powerful scientific research can be and how important it is to keep investing in it. You know, speaking of research, you mentioned earlier that lenacapavir was 100 percent effective in preventing HIV infection in a trial with women in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, yeah. So this was a really groundbreaking clinical trial where women received injections of lenacapavir every six months. And amazingly, none of the participants who got the drug contracted HIV during the entire study period, which really shows you the potential of lenacapavir, not just as a treatment, but also as a way to prevent HIV. That is incredible. I mean, it really highlights the potential impact that this therapy could have for individuals and for public health overall. It does. It really opens up some exciting possibilities for the future of HIV prevention. You know, just imagine a world where we have a long acting injectable medication that can effectively prevent HIV transmission that could totally change the game in terms of ending the epidemic. It's a really powerful thought. But like you've been saying throughout our conversation, these scientific advancements are only part of the solution. Right, we still need to address the social and economic factors that contribute to the spread of HIV and make sure that everyone has access to the tools they need to prevent it and treat it. Yeah, I completely agree. It's gonna take a collective effort involving collaboration across different fields and countries. Well, this has been a super informative and thought-provoking conversation for our listeners in the US who are tuning in to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast mm. you know, to get the latest info on HIV testing and treatment. What's the one thing you want them to take away from our deep dive on Lena Capavir. I would say stay hopeful. There is genuine reason to be optimistic about the future of HIV treatment and prevention. New therapies like Lena Capavir are being developed and they hold so much promise, but it's also important to stay informed, engaged, and proactive when it comes to your own healthcare. Talk to your doctor about the latest advancements, advocate for better access to care, and know that you're not alone in this fight. Well said. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into Lena Capavir for our listeners. Remember to stay tuned to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast for more in-depth discussions on these critical topics related to HIV testing and treatment across the United States. As always, knowledge is power. The more we understand about this virus and the ways we can fight it, the stronger we become in our collective mission to end the HIV epidemic.